Thank you. Thank you for coming to uh, watch our show, Tips from the Pros with Chef Philippe. And my old students, friend of mine over here, Chef Colin Lord. Thank you, Chef. And um, Colin, you know, many years ago I moved to Louisiana and I got to say that what kept me here is the good wildlife that you have to offer in Louisiana. Absolutely. The fishing, the hunting, and that's why they call Louisiana the uh, sportsman paradise, am I right? So, yeah. here in the audience today, I have a very distinguished guest, Mr. Tillieu from the Wildlife and Fishery. Mr. Tillieu, come on by here, please. <laughs> All right. Not, not that I got in trouble, you know, because I, I did put myself in many trouble, <laughs> not knowing, you know, all the laws and so on. <laughs> but um, we here on, on a mission today, and um, I did a little fishing trip not long ago, and I was riding with a friend of mine, actually a trapper, who uh, for a living he fished, and his name is Mr. Billy Tillieu, and I really want to thank this gentleman very highly. And I want everybody to give a hand. You don't know him, but he's a great guy. And Billy Tillieu is one of my people. He speaks French. He speaks the Cajun French. And Matthew, run the tape, please. Let's go to the bayou. All right. Well, you don't see me there, but actually I'm on that boat with my good friend Billy Tillieu. And we are 10 minutes from the landing near a care pot in a little town. And you see the fish jumping right there? Look at that other fish jumping yeah. in the boat. And Mr. Till, you, you know what kind of fish we're talking about, right? Yeah, we're talking about one of the uh, Asian carp. The All carp. right. Well, look, and guys, we have a treat for you today. Louisiana, this is what we caught on that boat trip. And this is this giant fish here called the silver carp. And, and Mr. Till, you, you are the head of the freshwater division, right? Correct. At the State of Wildlife Fishery. Uh, tell us a little bit about the fish. Well, the fish came over, uh, it's what we call an invasive species. Once it got here, it just kind of took over. Up in the northern states, uh, you can YouTube it or something and look at it, and when you look at that photo, you'll see just hundreds of fish jumping just like that. Absolutely. People who sample like we do in wildlife and fisheries, mm -hmm. they wear masks now <laughs> to prevent the fish from actually injuring them. There have been people not it's unconscious not, it's not, it's by not a bulletproof jacket. They got <laughs> fish-proof jacket. Okay, I got you. So, but, and what they're doing, though, is, is they're competing with our native fish. Is the reason and we're concerned. That's, that's why you are very worried about this, right? Yeah, that's correct. When and, they get and here in those numbers, they've correct. got to be doing something and, to our and, native And fish. why? Why are they really hurting? Because I heard they are plankton here, right? They are, but almost all fish, when they're little bitty fish, are plankton eaters. All right, so, so explain gonna... that because I want the audience to really understand that. You mean that when the bass lay the eggs or bram lay eggs, the larvas feed on plankton, they right? They feed on plankton. Now, the, the, the little fish feed on live animals, zooplankton, in the uh, water. And, uh, and these bad boys? This one is going to go after some of that, and he's a phytoplankton person. Okay. You know, he tries to eat plants mostly, but he's okay. going to filter out anything that's in the water, including the animals. All right. And so he is going to compete. Now, there are also other fish in the water, such as paddlefish and mm -hmm. shad, yeah. that are also filter feeders. Okay. So they're in very direct competition with those fish. Okay, but these guys are multiplying really fast, Yes. right? Oh. No predators. Once and they get this size, they're pretty safe. And yeah. how much plankton do they eat? When they're small, and then I'm going by literature, it's about 15, when they get to about 15 pounds, they've eaten about their body weight every day. Of plankton. Of plankton. Now, Correct. once they get to about 15 pounds, then they eat about half their body like weight. Like these guys, do you eat literally 10 pounds of plankton a day? Yes. Now, that's a lot of food. That is. All right? So, he's literally eating the food of all these little larvas that, that you know, of our native fish. Competing with so, fish. The last time you were talking to me, you said that the displacing species such as bram and bath and... Well, they're going to, whatever they're in the waters were. Now, what this mm -hmm. fish has a tendency to do is they spawn in the rivers, but then they find the backwaters, mm -hmm. the lakes and the backwaters yeah. to actually grow up in. Okay. So whatever's there, bass, brim, shad, they they're going to compete with that. Yeah, but they, they will hurt that population, correct? They, the numbers we're seeing will definitely hurt the populations of some species of fish. Uh, okay, definitely. so it's definitely a nuisance. Oh, definitely. Definitely. So that's the point we want to make to the audience, and this fish is a nuisance. And we have to do something about it. And so far, you have tried it. Uh, you told me that you, you, some people have been there and cooked it and tried to, to prepare it, and well, what was it? Well, we, we were working with a commercial fisherman at the time, and we brought back uh, four different species of Asian carp. Mm -hmm. This is the silver. They've got the big head. And he brought them back and uh, cooked them all up, and we tried them. Now, the meat was a little 
I, I've eaten your fish already. Well, and no, no, but say it. I mean, you know. It, it was white meat. No, very, my, my fish your was. Fish, but the meat what, was very what white. about when you had it? Well, so. I was going to say, the, uh, the meat we were eating is a little bit grayish colored. Mm -hmm. It was a little off colored. Okay. Uh, it wasn't the pure white that I noticed that the flesh was when you cleaned it. Yes. Uh, and I and, got an explanation <laughs> for that in a minute. And it, it had an aftertaste. <laughs> it had that overpowering fish taste to it. Okay, so it was not really good and it was not suitable no. for no. my audience there that love good food, right? I, I, I took a lot of ribbing when I went back to my office after <laughs> eating it the first time and I said, this fish is good to eat. So <laughs> tell us uh, tell, tell about the experience when I called you up and said, Mr. Till, you have to come and, and try this fish. And, uh, and what, what, what was your experience when you tried it? Well, I was skeptical, and uh, you had a camera on me at the time, and I was a little... <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. I had to make a documentation. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got three of them, actually. Well, Two of them. I, I, think you were waiting <laughs> for this, I think you were waiting for this great expression, but I was sitting there still waiting for that aftertaste to hit me. Yeah. And it never did. Just it the good did. taste of the fish. Correct. So it was, it was delicious. So... Uh, you think at that time, when you called me back, you went to the office, told the entire story, and it, your boss couldn't believe you, and you called me back. That was funny, folks. Yeah, like you said, I just took a big ribbing. They gave me a hard time. Told me my credibility was kind of getting low <laughs> trying to promote this fish. And uh, so I, I called Jeff Philippe and said, could you come and cook for my office? I need some support here. And, and he that did. was last week. And he did. Yeah, and everybody was, uh, go ahead. And then well, I was just going to say, I, was a, you know, I, I didn't know if they'd respond in front of you, so I went around and pulled them yeah. all personally, and everybody loved the yeah, fish. Yeah, they, they sort of tricked me, you know, <laughs> because I had a knife with me, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> but I, knew, I knew well. So um, to, to go back to Visa, I, uh, you know, when I went down the bayou and I talked to the fishermen, I talked to some brass, uh, bass pro fishermen that, you know, enjoy that type of fishing, and they are all worried about these particular uh, you know, invasive fish that is taking over our water. And uh, so far, I think the best solution, and you will agree with me, is to get the audience to try it and go behind the audience is get the chef to be involved with it sure. and use us in, in the restaurant. And you think that that way we can definitely help to resolve the problem. Definitely. You, and you're going to never get rid of them, but in order to control them, you need a yeah, market. Control for them. them. Yeah. You we need don't want to totally to get rid of them. They're pretty cute, I think. You know, they keep <laughs> cute. Now, tell them about open the mouth, like you said the other day, and kind of show the, the cameras. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, yeah. People are kind of, and just when you say filter feeders, if you can see the red part, well, that's where the uh, oxygen is taken in. But in the back, you see the gill rakers, and that's what they actually use to filter out the uh, different food particles. Mm -hmm. And in some fish, it just looks like some teeth hanging down. Mm -hmm. But in these, you can see it's a little sponge looking. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's really, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So anything that goes through that gets weird. trapped in there. Yeah. And then they take that and they, it goes through the digestive system. I don't know if I can cook this part, but I know <laughs> I can do this part, that's for sure. So um, anything else you would like to say while you're here about this fish and, and how hard you you all been working on trying to, you know, yeah, promote we, this we were trying to promote it. We're trying to get this fish uh, out of the water. We would Literally. like it out. I okay. mean, it's just a species we don't want uh, okay. to take over. And how long it's been in Louisiana around? I would say probably in the numbers that it's in, mm -hmm. about the last six years. Six years, okay. Uh, some trappers have were sent it's 10 to 12 years, six years. Six. Uh, some of them have been sent for 10 years or so. And uh, the Illinois water, I don't know if you've seen that on the news, but people get hurt. It's from China. It was imported from China actually in 1973. I did some research on that. And uh, some guy uh, was raising catfish, brought them to eat the plankton and the algae to keep the water clean. And that's why they, they got here. That's how they got here. And somehow a storm came up. That's a story. And well, that's a similar story. to the Nutria story. <laughs> and the fish went underwater. And now uh, it, it, there is places, uh, you agree with me, that if you launch a boat, you literally will get hurt by this fish. You've got to be very careful in some points. Yes. Do you know how much Chinese population is? Yeah. Oh, well, we know. Billion and a half. Well, don't worry. The fish is going well, to we, 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 <laughs> let, let, let me. Let, yeah, we know about this. And actually, they've been trying to do that. But it's a little bit more complicated you, than that. We need to get more let me tell you some. We need to get more chefs. Have you, have you, have you, have you, have you been to FedEx and ship anything to China? Uh, no. <laughs> no, it's pretty expensive. So, but anyway, I don't want to give it to China because it's too good. And I'm going to demonstrate that in a minute, how good this fish is. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Tuller. Oh, thank thank you. you very much. Thank you. Tips from the Pros is brought to you commercial-free by Klein Peter Dairy since 1913.
Manda's Fine Meats, superior quality only. Pica Peppa, Jamaica's international legend since 1921. And Rouse's Market, where the chefs shop. I, I want to again thank you, Mr. Thierry, for all this help because, uh, you know, I was not aware that they were in Louisiana until I was riding on a boat. But let me show you a little bit about, we're going to fillet this fish and, ah, there we go. And then we're going to be able to show you how beautiful the meat is on this fish. It's pretty bony, but we're going to resolve this as well. Thank you, Colin. Your knife is really sharp. Oh, That's chef. really helped a lot. Chef, it's been so long since I had a practical, actual uh, lesson for me. I'm excited as anybody about Oh, yeah. About this. There you go. It's been a while for myself. almost forgot. But I want you guys to see it. I am lift up the meat. How very appetizing. Thank you, Colin. Right, I was wondering. If I was going to participate. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Chef, it's beautiful meat. Uh, it's the first time I ever see yeah, the inside, but it's uh, it's, it's fantastic. Absolutely it's, incredible. It's really not much different than yogurt. most of the uh, freshwater fish that you would. Well, no, play. not I mean, not the, not much. And I will say this: how how do you get it that color? Are we going to get to that? Well, point? we're going to get to that point because, as Mr. Tillier was saying earlier, and folks, when I said beautiful meat, look at this. You ready to take yeah, this down? we're gonna. We, one piece will be enough. We'll fill it the other one. Let's talk about this. You see how nice this is. And this is a white meat, and this is a meat that, that really restaurants are looking for. Absolutely. And the texture of it is really what impressed me the most, because the texture of that uh, meat here is, is very compact, and you can do a lot of things with that. All right. So now we're going to kind of fill it, the, the, take the skin off. All right. Let's see if I haven't lost my touch, Mr. Colin Lord. We got what we wanted. Now what we have to do is just to take that the bloodline, the bloodline out. out and that's easy to do you see i kind of get my touch back up together there you go now when you have that done then you can see how beautiful am i right colin absolutely jeff i think it's extremely important now to let everybody know that uh when you're filleting fish especially of any size like this one no matter what kind it's very very important to always remove the bloodline or you're going to get the bitter uh, taste that the gentleman was talking on, about on earlier. Any fish, absolutely. absolutely. Now, the last time I filleted, of course, you know, um, I had a, a nice set of knife. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the, the, the meat that I have literally from the fish was really around 25. And if you really do a good job, it will be around 30%. And the bigger the fish is, and actually the better the meat is. Au contraire, with the red fish or the red drum or right. all the species that you can catch in the salt water, I, I have cleaned some really big one, and I'm telling you, I was very, very impressed. Now, you notice about one thing about the fish. Take the, the, the one up. That, that something happened, Colin, and let me tell you how I discovered to make this work. Well, you know, when I was fishing, and I was on a boat, and I saw this fish jumping literally out of water, and I mean, I'm telling you, they were like little torpedoes coming out of the water. And I knew one thing that definitely they are very strong swimmer. And to be a strong swimmer, they have to have a very strong and, and very rich in blood, which carry oxygen. And that's what gives the power of the fish. Mr. Till, you will agree with me, right? Definitely. So being a chef, and that's Chef Colin was mm -hmm. saying, you know, we know that the blood vein in the fish is not good. And, and any blood vein in any fish is not good. So I know that the blood is not good. So what I did, literally, you see that fish is missing his tail. So what I did is I cut the tail off right away and let the fish bleed. And without the bleeding, you see the color of the meat and the texture of the meat. There is no aftertaste anymore, and that's the reason why. We found a way to prepare this fish in a way where chefs going to enjoy it, and anybody's going to enjoy it. Furthermore, I got LSU involved right. and, um, and found out that in omega-3 is higher in omega-3 than salmon, Correct. Colin. So it's very rich, very nutritious as well. And of course, you know, no mercury because they're plankton heater, correct, mm. Mr. Tillier? Yeah, anyway. So here yeah, you got really a fish well. that is actually invading our water. And, you know, the, 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 only, the only...